Welcome students. I am Mrs. Tinku Bhattacharji, your teacher for geography. We are now in the second lesson of the chapter of a changing earth. In the previous chapter, we had learnt that there are two basic forces that are responsible for sculpting the face of the earth from the interior and the exterior. Today, we will be learning in details about the endogenic forces or the internal forces that act on the surface of the earth. Before we get to know about the internal forces or the endogenic forces, we need to grasp some knowledge about geology. Let's take a closer look at the coastlines of the continents. You can see that they are irregular. Now if we bring these different continents closer to each other like two pieces of a puzzle. Suppose Africa and South America. We bring it closer to each other. What we see is that these two continents have a snug fit. You can see that the African continent and the South American continent are actually fitting in together like a jigsaw puzzle. If they are fitting in like a jigsaw puzzle, why is it so? Was all these continents cuddled together at one point of time? Did some forces result in movement of these continents away from each other and resulted in the present face of the earth with its continents and ocean basins as we see today? The answer to this question was proposed in the early 20th century by, by Alfred Wegener, a German meteorologist and geophysicist. He put forward the proposition that the continents and ocean basins that we see today were not originally in the same position. He put forward the proposition that all these continents were at one point of time in geological history cuddled together in form of a single supercontinent which was called the Pangaea. This was surrounded by a primeval ocean which he termed as Panthalassa. Around 200 million years ago, earth movements resulted in breaking up of this continent that is the supercontinent Pangaea and the different pieces of this supercontinent drifted apart from each other and formed the continents and ocean basins as we see today. When Alfred Wegener put forward this theory which he called the continental drift theory, people, his contemporary scientists, physicists, they ridiculed him and they totally negated the idea. However, in later years, further research by his predecessors led credibility to his idea. And this formed the basis of the modern theory of plate tectonics. During the last 60 years, the modern research and modern technology has provided us with breakthrough information. Earth scientists have put forward the proposition that the surface of the earth, the crust of the earth is not a single plate. It is broken up into a number of large and small, rigid, irregularly shaped plates which are continuously moving. They form the continents and the ocean basins. 
earth scientists have put forward the view that the surface of the earth is not a continuous block. It consists of several large and small rigid irregularly shaped slabs or plates which are moving with relation to each other. These plates carry the continents and the ocean basins. Let us suppose that the surface of the earth, that is the sphere of the earth, is presented in form of a plate. You can see a plate. Now, it is not in form of a whole single plate. Oops! Yes, as you see, this plate is broken up into a number of pieces that are fitting in like a jigsaw puzzle. Similarly, a crust of the earth is also broken up into a number of plates or slabs that forms the crust of the earth. So, what do we get to know? The, we got to know now that the surface of the earth is broken up into a number of large and small rigid irregularly shaped plates that carry the continents and ocean basins and these plates are called the lithospheric plates or tectonic plates. Why are they called lithospheric plates? Simple, because the crust of the earth is also called the lithosphere and as the crust of the earth is broken up into different slabs or tectonic plates, it is called lithospheric plates. These plates, that is the lithospheric plates, they are moving or drifting apart from each other very slowly by about 2.5 centimeter to 5 centimeters per year. But what is the cause, the force which is resulting in the movement of these plates? The heat and pressure from the molten magma from the interior of the crust is resulting in convection currents. So what happens? The heated molten magma rises up, cools down and then comes back, gets heated again and rises again. So this leads to a series of convection currents and these convection currents due to the heat and pressure of the molten magma inside the crust are the basic force that are resulting in the movement of the lithospheric plates. Now let us recapitulate a bit about what we have learnt in this lesson. We have learnt about the geological history of the earth in brief to understand the working of the endogenic forces. When we are talking about lithospheric plates and the movement of the plates, we also need to know how they move in relation to each other. Suppose my two palms are two lithospheric plates. The situation or the case may be that both the plates are moving towards each other. So what happens? They collide. This particular boundary where two lithospheric plates collide is called convergent boundary. Why convergent? Because two lithospheric plates are converging at this point. Now what will happen when these two plates move towards e each other? There will be an impact. On account of that impact, there will be tremors on the surface of these two plates. One case may be that whatever materials was there in the intermediate area between these two plates will be compressed due to the movement of the plates. These materials which are in between will therefore be folded and will rise up to form a fold mountain. 
the other case may be that this plate suppose plate A and plate B plate A and plate B are moving towards each other plate B in relation to plate A subsides below the plate A so what will happen on account of this there will again be tremors and there will be pressure in the interior layers of the earth as well what will happen there is molten magma beneath the crust this plate is, plate is go is subsiding downwards and is pushing this particular molten magma wherever there will be vent what will happen the molten magma will fl flow out or ooze out on the surface and what is that that is volcanic eruption so when we are talking about endogenic forces we can say that the movement of this lithospheric plates in relation to each other are somewhat responsible for the endogenic movement what are endogenic forces as we have learnt up till now they are the internal forces that are acting on the surface of the earth so what are these tectonic forces this tectonic movements this tectonic positioning of the plates in relation to each other they are resulting in the internal forces that are sculpting the surface of the earth so this are actually the basic force behind the endogenic forces so you can say that this are actually the basic reason behind the endogenic forces or creation of the endogenic forces so we can say that endogenic forces can be divided into two categories one is sudden movements sudden movements are sudden violent movements this result in earthquakes volcanic eruptions and landslides the other is slow movements which are termed as diastrophic forces this diastrophic forces may lead to the formation of different landforms about which we will be learning in the later part of this chapter one thing which we learnt about was that collision takes place and there are one plate goes below the other and results in earthquakes and volcanic eruption in some other case the lithospheric plates may move away from each other also it's not that they will always move towards each other they may diverge from each other or move away from each other so what happens suppose these are two lithospheric plates they are moving away from each other again there will be tremors on the surface of the two plates and in this particular basin that is created you can see it's a basin two plates have moved away from each other a basin is created in this proportion lava may ooze out to form sea floor spreading the other case may be that two plates may move in relation to each other they are together they these are two plates they slide past each other this is called transform boundaries one plate is this the other plate is this they move with relation to each other this is called transform boundaries here also what happens one plate is moving with relation to each other what is there there is friction between the two plates that friction how will it be manifested again in form of earth movements and violent earth movements that is earthquake one big example about where two plates converge towards each other is the pacific plate you can see this particular map with the pacific ring of fire surrounding the pacific ocean these are the junctions where two plates converge with each other and this particular pacific ring of fire has about 90% of the earthquake zones and 
75% of the earth's active and dormant volcanoes. We saw that the crust of the earth is broken up into lithospheric plates moving with relation to each other. This results in earth movements that can be in form of sudden violent movements resulting in earthquakes, volcanic eruptions and landslides. The other case may be that the plates are moving or the internal movement of the earth is very slow and that is called diastrophic forces that may result in the formation of continents and ocean basins and mountains, rift valleys etc. So we sum up this lesson today by the knowledge we have gathered about the basic reason behind the endogenic movements and we got to know about the lithospheric plates, we got to know how we came to know that the earth movements are taking place from, from the interior of the earth, we also got to know that convection currents are resulting in the movement of the plates. In our next lesson, we will learn about the effect of this endogenic movements or the endogenic forces. That is, we will start with volcanoes and go on to learn about earthquakes later on. Thanks for today. Meet you in the next lesson where we shall be learning about volcanoes.